So、uh, at first, we'd like to invite Ms. Anna Caprina. She is Environmental Affairs Office at the UNEC Convention on Long Range Transboundary Pollution. She supports the work of the EMEP, EMEP Steering Body, and the Working Group on Effects under the Convention.、Uh, she is an environmental specialist with 16 years of experience in environment, sustainable development, and humanitarian assistance on over 25 countries worldwide. Uh, prior to joining the USC Air Convention Secretariat, she was worked for UNEP, UNHCR, and the UNEC Water Convention and UNDP on issues、uh, pertaining to climate change mitigation and adaptation, environmental pollution, and UN internal sustainability. So please,、uh, Ms. Anna Caprina,、uh, your floor is you. Uh, thank you, Do、uh, Dr. Imashetek.、Uh, thank you for introduction. And、um, I have just recently joined the UNSC Convention on, on Long Range Transboundary Air Pollution about a、um, couple of months ago. So thank you for inviting me to the workshop today. And it's been already very、um, enriching and interesting for me.、Um, today, I would like to speak、um, to you about.、Um, Briefly, to make a brief introduction about the convention,、uh, to share some successful stories from the work of the convention, and finally, to give a brief overview of lessons learned and priorities.、Um, air pollution is often seen as, as a local problem alone, and I'm sure the UNSC region is not an, an exception in this, but we all know that. Air pollution can travel long distances.、Uh, it's therefore a problem that transcends local and, if you will, any kind of borders. And realization that air pollution indeed is a transboundary problem led to the signing of the UNEC Convention on Long Range Transboundary Air Pollution, and for short, we call it Air Convention in 1979.、Uh, it entered in force in、uh, 1983 and, and became The first international treaty to deal with、um, air pollution on broad regional basis. Today, the convention covers 51 parties、um, in the Northern Hemisphere,、uh, all the way stretching all the way from Canada to the US,、um, Europe, and all the way to Kazakhstan.、Uh, since its entry in, into force, the, the convention has been extended、um, by eight protocols. Which cover a number of pollutants、um, that include sulfur,、uh, nitrogen oxide,、um, nitrogen oxides,、uh, volatile organic compounds, persistent organic pollutants, heavy metals, and particulate matter, including black carbon.、Um, Dr. Red already has referred. The famous 1952 London smog, and you can see、uh, a photograph from that time on my slide as well. Um, and um, um, so, the massive increase in emissions of air pollution since the, after the Second World War、um, led to、uh, pollution episodes in Europe and North America, such as the London,、uh, famous London smog, and scientific research in the 60s and 70s. And started to show、um, the scope of the damage that has occurred, and particularly in Scandinavian countries.、Um, already referred to the acidification, fish loss in lakes,、um, dieback of forests, all these important issues, they required international action, which accumulated、um, in, the, in the signing of the convention under the auspices of the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. And the result of this common Collective effort so far has been、uh, very impressive.、Um, just to highlight some of them, that emission reductions、um, were achieved by 70% of sulfur and up to 40% of、um, nitrogen oxides, which also、um, all that work had very important consequences,、uh, um, positive effects for human health. This、um, important decoupling of economic growth and air pollution trends was able to achieve avoidance of over 600,000 premature deaths in Europe and North America.
Um, just to focus on the key points of the um, that are covered, the key work that's covered by the convention. So um, the, the convention is unique that because it provides internationally legally binding agreement, which sets emission reduction targets for number of pollutants. And it provides very important platform um, for the countries to discuss policies to reduce air pollution and to negotiate new uh, emission reduction targets. And the uh, science policy interface under the convention has always played um, a very strong and very important role. Um, it has created a common scientific understanding um, among countries um, and also ownership by the parties. It, it um, directly informs policy making about the effects of air pollution on the environment and the human health, as well as um, about the atmospheric monitoring and integrated assessment. Um, so the convention uh, monitors the compliance of the parties also um, with their reporting obligations under the convention and, and its protocols. And in addition, it supports parties with capacity building and awareness raising. Despite the, the huge progress under the convention, there are still certain issues um, that are remaining in the region. And in particular, it's the issue of uh, background levels of pollution in the region, in the UNICE region. Um, and that essentially means, uh, although um, emissions were reduced at the local and national level, the background pollution influenced uh, by transboundary sources is still higher than WHO recommends. And that's why international cooperation on transboundary air pollution is so critical, including with the other regions. So um, the event today and the fact that we were invited is really important and very much appreciated by us. Um, I wanted just to briefly uh, touch base on the convention structure. Please do not be intimidated by this organigram. It's also available in my presentation, which um, I think will be available online. And also you can find it um, on the convention website. But I just wanted to highlight uh, uh, the two important scientific and technical bodies under the convention. The first one being the working group on ethics that provides important information on the degree and the geographic extent of the impacts of major air pollutants on human health and the environment. So um, under the working group on ethics, there are six international cooperative programs or ICPs on forests, waters, uh, min uh, materials, vegetation, integrated monitoring and modeling and mapping and uh, a task force on health. So these um, ICPs or um, international cooperative programs identify the most um, endangered areas ecosystems and other receptors uh, by considering damage to human health, terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems and materials. And an important part of this work um, is ongoing long-term monitoring. And the work is also underpinned by um, scientific research on those response, critical loads and level, uh, critical loads and levels and damage evaluation. The second important um, uh, pillar um, of work under the convention is the cooperative um, program for monitoring and evaluation of the long range transmission of air pollutants in Europe or um, IMEP for short. So um, it's, it's carried out in um, collaboration with a broad network of scientists and national experts uh, and it provides specifically scientific support to convention uh, in the areas of atmospheric monitoring and modeling uh, emission inventories, uh, emission projections, and integrated assessment. So um, it's, it provides really critical inputs in the uh, decision making and the policy making under the convention. Uh, this program, EMEP program, is financed by mandatory contributions from the parties um, uh, that are set in the EMEP financing protocol. Um, but most other of the other convention uh, activities under the convention are financed by uh, voluntary contributions. 
So just to focus on some lessons learned, we see that it's um, really critical to create science policy interface and make it serve to the policy making and target setting. Um, and so this is the one of the strengths of convention that we see is a very strong science policy interface that has been developed over time, of course, uh, not over one day and a very strong expert network in the region and also um, from outside the region. Um, sometimes we also um, try to engage experts from the wider region as um, observers um, to learn about conventions experience and perhaps implement it in their countries, uh, the experience I mean. Um, the convention's financing mechanism has been also successful, which is a mix of mandatory and voluntary cash and in-kind contributions. And that provides really a strong um, ownership with the parties. Um, and a lot of the parties are involved in leading or, or hosting uh, the centers, scientific and technical centers and task forces. Um, also, the national research and monitoring is a very important building block for the work of the convention. The convention provides strong policy guidance to the parties to implement obligations under the protocols, and it provides also a platform for exchange of experiences. Um, and finally, the, the convention also aims to create a level playing field among its parties and assist those parties uh, that are facing challenging in building the necessary capacity for implementation um, of obligations under the convention and protocols. Um, just briefly, what, what is lying ahead um, in its long-term strategy for 2020-2030, um, the parties of the convention set the priorities for the future development of the convention. Uh, this strategy is also available on the convention website. So um, it, it has been recognized that um, uh, in, in addition to maximize, maximizing the impact of protocols, um, um, in the region, the, uh, the strategy recognizes that finally the air pollution has been recognized as a problem at the global level. And um, this is why the cooperation across all the scales is important. Um, reduce, reducing of emissions is important on all level, a local, a national, regional and global. And we would like to strengthen cooperation with the networks uh, such as in that across the regions um, and and share our lessons learned from the convention. So one of the um, vehicles for us to share the lessons learned under the, under the convention is a new um, e-learning course that I wanted to bring your attention to today. Um, it's, um, it's a very concrete uh, vehicle for um, for scientists and policymakers and government officials and staff from international organizations from other regions and also from our region uh, to learn about work of the convention and the key issues it, it addresses. Um, here there is a bit of more information uh, about the, the course. It takes three and a half hours um, self-paced. It's free. So um, you can also access it from um, on from the website that's here on the slide or from convention website. Um, I would li just like to say that uh, development of this course would not be possible without support of European Union and Germany and Sweden. Um, thank you very much for your attention and I would be happy to answer your questions later on. <laughs>